Um, good morning, everybody, again. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we'll just uh, just like to remind you that we have the guidebook for the um, um, uh, for the conference, and there will be the Google Code Gem this evening. Uh, you need to register online. Okay, um, we are here with Lynn Root. Uh, maybe you already know it, you know already know her, but uh, from the PyLadies group, you know? and, and she works uh, at Red Hat for uh, as a software engineer, and uh, she will uh, tell us five easy projects for our uh, uh, new fellow Pythonistas. Lynn, the show is yours. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you can hear me, okay, everyone? All right. Um, just a quick question. Um, anyone here learning how to code or just starting to learn Python? Raise your hand. Ish, yeah. And how about um, teaching folks Python? All right, good crowd. Um, how about um, anyone have that drowning feeling of trying to learn or teach how to code? Don't, don't be shy. Okay. It's all right. I will be your uh, lifeguard on duty. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> It's a, it's a joke. Come on, laugh. <laughs> um, no, I'm like a legit swimmer. Um, I have um, like a, a certification in um, teaching uh, people how to swim and um, as a lifeguard as well. But I can also teach folks how to code. So, yay. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, my name is Lynn Root. Um, I am a software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I am Rogue Lynn on the um, interwebs. And um, you can probably find me at the river bar across the street most often than not. <laughs> Um, all these uh, slides are on uh, rogue.ly slash newcoder, so um, I'll show this link at the end again, um, but just in case you're curious. So um, why am I here? Um, I want to first take a look at how we traditionally learn how to code in computer science and um, address how we should be learning how to code and then leave you with something to help new coders or the new coders um, learn or teach. So first off, I want to take a look at um, the popping up of um, online schools like uh, Udacity and Coursera and uh, Codecademy, and uh, like brick and mortar schools like um, Hackbright and uh, Dev Bootcamp, which is often in like New York or uh, San Francisco, um, teaching folks how to code. Um, software engineering is definitely having its 15 minutes of fame. It's quite popular now. Um, but in the context of history, um, software engineering is merely just in its industrial phase. Um, if we look at other engineering fields, there's no revolutionary way of um, building a bridge or a highway. Um, we've perfected the uh, um, assembly line to build um, cars and whatnot, and um, making a guitar or a violin is now more of an art than a science. Um, yet we're still learning how best to swim um, or how best to approach uh, software engineering problems. Um, should we stop writing classes or write more classes? Um, we're rapidly developing new languages like uh, Topaz Ruby on PyPy and perfecting current ones. So perhaps um, a textbook in um, a classroom is fine for um, learning more established engineering fields um, like architecture or manufacturing. Um, but with a revolutionary pace of software development, uh, how best should we teach its principles? So uh, a four-year degree won't merely grant you elite status, certainly not by uh, researchers' standards. Um, there's this professor dude, Leon Winslow, from the uh, University of Dayton in Ohio um, that uh, did a study trying to answer just this. Can we turn novice programmers into um, experts within four years? And as the quote alludes, not so much. It takes about 10 years. So in my experience, uh, one predominant theme um, is that I'm seeing is a gap between blowing bubbles to uh, learning how to swim more than a few laps. Um, so you went through Learn Python the hard way, or you tell someone to go through Learn Python the hard way, but then what? What do you do next? A for loop uh, might be easy to identify, um, to code exactly um, what to do, um, but that's not exactly real life, right? So there's plenty of debate on, on how we should go about learning how to code. Uh, one major underlying theme is, that I've both read and experienced myself is um, this notion of concepts for granted versus concepts for context. context. So um, we, um, uh, this is a thought that we are less likely to uh, develop an advanced understanding of what we're trying to master 
Then if we're searching for an underlying meaning, trying to integrate newly learned concepts into what we already know. So learning from lectures and textbooks only goes so far. Um, with typical formal education, one learns certain computer uh, programming concepts like how to compile and install an OS or why our particular code base doesn't work. But it doesn't necessarily bridge uh, outside of those concepts to understand its application or how the whole works together with its parts. We need something to create um, those connections outside of those isolated concepts. Uh, so rather than episodic learning where the guppy accumulates um, unconnected facts, we need to learn cumulatively where um, the discovery is more organized and in order to build ourselves context while learning. So we construct our learning rather than simply listening and regurgitating what is taught. So how can we best apply that to learning how to code? So my story, uh, I started off blowing bubbles. Um, I did uh, one course in computer science after I graduated college with a business degree. And um, I would have failed if it weren't for my crappy little final project um, shattering the fact that I couldn't code. I just went through the um, Django tutorial and made a Django app. <laughs> um, but I loved it. Like the chilly 3 a.m. Uh, never looked better trying to debug stuff. Um, so I didn't exactly want to pay another uh, $2,000 for another course. So um, I, I did my own project-based learning. So I was, I was drowning in class from being told this is how we coordinate the water to here are the hydrodyna hydrodynamic equations that your body must follow in order to swim fast. So um, I ditched the traditional academia and I've been learning how to code through um, projects. Um, it's been um, self-directed self study with the motivation to actually do this for a living. And um, within a year, um, it paid off. I'm now a software engineer at Red Hat. <laughs> and um, so granted, while I still choke on water, um, I still took to the water um, myself after studying what other, people's, other people do, how they code, and teaching others myself. So um, I've certainly belly flopped a few times. Um, I tend to find myself learning more through frustration um, than being simply told what to do or how to do it and usually ends in success, but not without tears or frustration. Um, it might not be the best way to go about learning how to code, um, but it certainly challenges me to push myself through hard times, and it builds my endurance for longer swimming races. Um, but I see myself in a good uh, position to teach what I've learned. Um, I'm no Olympic swimmer. I still have the fresh noob eyes um, when trying to understand a code base. Um, but yet when I'm trying to explain to someone else, concepts do solidify. Um, teaching others gives that personal meaning to me and understanding since I want to create that context while building cumulative learning. So, no selfish um, way to further my understanding. I'm here to coach you through uh, five swim lessons. I have uh, written five tutorials. Um, four are like legitimately complete and I'm still writing the fifth one. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> and um, these are meant to build on, e um, build on each other and thread that um, concepts for context for the new, gup, the new guppy in the water, but also be digestible and not overwhelming. Uh, these tutorials aim to uh, pick up where introductory or outdated tutorials or um, uh, like learn Python the hard way and dive into Python, um, where they leave off. So um, you learn how to tread water um, by playing water polo, but not by uh, someone dictating you um, to move your arms back and forth. So each has a purpose and a set of goals and ends on um, how these projects are used in real life and where to explore afterwards in case a new coder wants to learn more in depth. And there is some subtlety uh, baked into these tutorials, in particular the language used and how topics are presented. Um, so I've written each tutorial with a set of side effects in mind, like indirect learning, um, that eventually become the goals of future tutorials. So we play water polo by treading water. Um, but it also builds endurance and strength indirectly. So another quote, um, knowledge is actively constructed by the student, not passively absorbed from uh, textbooks or lectures. So I want guppies to learn by doing. We can't read how to swim. You have to feel the water against your hands um, to learn how to paddle through. Uh, you must accidentally snort up water in order to breathe, learn how to breathe. So each tutorial, as the new coder dives in, he or she will be exposed to what 
Pythonic means um, with, um, through learning how to construct um, import statements in the proper order, or uh, how to um, write legible doc strings and comments, um, the language's uh, keywords while exploring file I.O. He or she will uh, work through uh, third-party packages to get a soft introduction on what it means to interact with a RESTful API and how to parse data um, returned from that API with uh, different data structures. Um, the terminology of object-oriented programming are introduced subtly um, through when instantiating classes and methods versus just calling a function. Each tutorial has the same goal of developing one's logic and approaching a problem through organization, through reading others' code, debugging, testing, and logging. So I've um, tried to write these in a way that addresses any stupid or uh, naive questions um, by using like sidebars to gently introduce new terminology. So for instance, the difference between um, doc strings and comments might be obvious to some people, but not all, especially when starting out. And so the constructive learning is um, exercised by these if you're curious sidebars that I mentioned earlier. I mean, of course, you're curious. You're the new coder, right? Um, so just a bit of positive language to entice folks to um, read a bit more advanced topics. It pushes their endurance. Uh, so as more advanced topics are introduced to these sidebars, they're not meant to pressure anyone to read them, read through them. You can like catch your breath and um, kind of skip over, but they're just guided to find more information if the new coder wants to dive deeper. If he or she skips the, um, or doesn't understand fully, that's fine. The tutorial can be completed with full understanding, and these sidebars will be um, explored again in future tutorials. So. Um, Many times we are given a project in school or somewhere and we wonder, um, you know, what good is this? Is this even used in real life or will I ever go to state championships? And the application of a project is a pitfall for a lot of folks. It can be discouraging to learn how to swim without a realm to show off one's skills. So I include an in-action conclusion with how each project is used in the industry now. Um, these are not meaningless exercises to learn data structures or how to graph with Matplotlib. Um, these tutorials are um, used um, for learning data structures to build tools um, that are being used in real life. And lastly, one main critique for new coders is where do I go from here after completing how-tos and guides? So you made it to state championships, now what? So it's extremely difficult to learn what you need to learn, yet not know how and not know what should be learned. Um, so to not burn out our new flying fish, uh, each tutorial ends with the guidance on where to go um, from the end, including how to build upon what was just coded and resources um, on, to, on the topics covered. So you might be curious, what um, are these five uh, tutorials? Um, the first one is uh, data visualization. Um, so while creating some graphs and plotting on Google Maps, uh, the purpose for the new coders to understand how to you know, run a Python file from a command line and how to import a Python file and taking a raw file and parsing its data with Python's data structures. And the side effects of working through this tutorial is like importing Python standard library um, as well as a self-written module and then installing and importing third-party packages, um, licensing and copyrights when using third-party packages, and just uh, file I.O. iterators, a little bit of generators, um, like uh, constants, doc strings, list comprehensions, just a soft introduction to those. Uh, the next uh, tutorial uh, uses techniques from the database tutorial um, to graph data grab from a public API. The project is to fetch video game platform information from a website, um, combine that with um, uh, CPI inflation data to adjust the value of the US dollar over time and to generate a bar chart to show the price development of these game consoles. So the goals is to solidify how to build a simple graph with matplotlib and as well as file IO, um, to interact with a public API and an introduction to REST, and parsing command line arguments. And then you're also exposed to um, Python 2 versus Python 3, the print uh, keyword function difference, and then logging and validating your own data. So this might actually be my uh, favorite tutorial. The third one is um, the web scraping tutorial. And it's meant to show um, folks how to grab data without the use of an API. The project builds a web um, scraper using um, Scrappy or Scrapy um, to scroll through um, Living Social um, to save local deals um, to Postgres. Um, it includes a quick how-to on cron jobs so folks can run the script daily. 
So um, rather than these annoying um, emails, folks can like query um, their, the database when they want a deal on skydiving or yoga. Um, so the, uh, go uh, the goals of this particular tutorial is to develop a more solid understanding of Python classes and inheritance, um, Python's generators and iterators, and then reading and writing to a database. And subtle concepts folks will be exposed to is using an ORM, um, why import star is bad, <laughs> and um, making a portable application. So um, what's great about this tutorial is that if folks have already gone through the Django tutorial, um, the model should be very familiar to them, or uh, it would also be a good primer on moving on to the Django tutorial. Um, also, um, finally, as a means for inspiration and to build a bit of personal context, um, the project finishes with a story about how one gal um, was able to use a, um, a scraper to continually scrape the um, London Olympics website to grab um, a ticket to the gymnastics final. So that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> and um, um, Scrapey actually makes use of Twisted, which is um, a great introduction to the next tutorial. And so I just had to write um, a tutorial based off Twisted. Um, this one is um, actually based off of um, a girl, a Jessamine Smith's um, IRC bot. She wrote a bot that um, if anyone within a channel that the bot's in would say that's what she said, um, the bot would reply with a notable quote from a woman, like that's what she actually said. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the purpose for the new coders is to get an, uh, like a brief introduction on how the internet works and uh, making a portable application and logging and testing. Um, while being indirectly exposed to like event-driven programming, um, IRC protocol and other protocols, and the antiquated means of communication that a lot of software engineers use. But of course, um, software engineering is more than the internet. So the final tutorial uh, walks new coders through building a GUI um, by making a Sudoku game. So with the least amount of hand-holding, this tutorial walks through how to build a game board as well as approach programming logic, the logic that makes Sudoku. So the goals for the new coder um, to take away are a vast understanding of Python's, an understanding of Python's vast um, standard library. Um, and drawing a custom GUI and approaching logic challenges and testing that logic. Well, in, being indirectly exposed to try and accepts private methods and uh, user-driven programming. So um, I took actually the first tutorial and um, I helped start Pilates of Stockholm about a month ago with the help of Spotify. And um, I basically um, based the workshop off of um, the database tutorial. And um, here's a little uh, picture, about 40 women attended. And I think about, um, 100% of RSVPs actually made it, which is pretty awesome. And so if you were to actually teach um, off of one of these tutorials or uh, learn yourself, um, a couple of takeaways are, so if you're a teacher, um, assume that there are more Windows machines than, than anticipated. <laughs> and um, perhaps make a separate um, day for installation because installation can take like one to two hours and can be very frustrating. Um, and assume that um, not 100% of folks will get it or understand it immediately. So I guess encourage folks to press through and focus. And if you're a new coder, um, you will get discouraged and it's, it's okay to cry, I've done that before. <laughs> um, and maybe take a break for um, a few hours, days, or maybe weeks and then come back. Um, and so you can come back with a fresh mind. And it's, um, and it's okay if you have a Windows machine, you don't need a new operating system or a new computer um, because um, setup usually does take a lot of work in general. And, um, um, and it's, it's, it's uh, real life. I guess software engineers do take a lot of time to set up and we just know how to Google for error messages, that's all. So um, to like wrap it up real quickly, um, so we're in um, software engineering's industrial revolution and we need sort of a, a revolutionary way um, for learning and teaching how to code. And so we need to learn how to code how we learn how to swim by doing. So um, this is the website. And as the lifeguard and coach, I advise our Python guppies to not get discouraged. Um, the way we are learning how to code leaves us on the edge of the pool, expecting us to compete after we read a chapter on human hydrodynamics. So you can try out these swim lessons um, on newcoder.io. You can give feedback on pull requests, and um, you can contribute and spread it around and use it to teach others. And it's okay, you don't need a swim certification. <laughs> Um, so yeah, please don't sink and swim safely. Thank you.
Well, uh, what um, books would you recommend for someone who's never started with Python before? Never, never looked at Python. Um, so I typically say to um, look at dive into Python or learn Python the hard way just for syntax. And then um, often I would say um, make your own like little mini projects like these tutorials. So th these are meant to um, pick, off, um, pick up off of like learn Python the hard way. Like you know syntax and for loops and, uh, and what a function looks like. Um, so I'd start with that first. Um, and it, I mean it's free and it's online. It's so you'd recommend both books? Sure. I mean, it depends. Yeah, uh, it depends upon your style. Um, some people like uh, learn Python the hard way a little bit better. Um, I guess try them both, and if one doesn't work for one, then try the other one. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, what's the what's the level of people coming to these uh, events in Stockholm? Um, a lot of them just don't know Python at all and have never coded or they um, maybe code in Java or C and want to learn Python. So it's, um, the PyLadies of Stockholm is pretty much beginner to Python, um, maybe um, no coding experience or maybe some. Um, but PyLadies in general, there's a lot of um, different levels. Um, for wor workshops we have um, are like expert Python programmers as mentors or um, maybe hosting talks to help inspire new coders to um, continue learning. So it's, um, depending upon the actual event, there's a variety of different experience levels. I can I turn that question on its head and ask what are the goals of the people who turn up to these things? What are they aiming to do? Are they all intending to become uh, people like yourself? Or are they just doing this for a hobby? Or is it just something they thought might be interesting? Um, it's like all of the above, to be honest. Um, a lot of folks do want um, to change careers and see that um, software engineering is, um, I guess, a sexy job, maybe. Um, but it can be quite difficult. Um, a lot of them just want to enhance their current job. Maybe they're stuck with Excel and they don't know how to like um, avoid Excel or something like that. So um, uh, just maybe enhancing their current job and making things automated. Um, and then there's um, folks that are like, um, programmers that want to use Python to just simplify their life and in, in, in jobs. So, I mean, that's it's a huge, yeah, huge base. How long does it how long does it take for the average student to complete one of these projects? How long? I mean, um, is a one day task or a two days task or? Well, um, I mean, I guess, I guess it depends upon how much time you want to put into it. Um, folks that may l know how to code already but might not know Python can probably take in a few hours, take to it in a few hours. But um, um, these tutorials have different parts, like maybe a series of parts, between three and five parts. And so each part kind of, for the new coder, could take a few hours. And so um, if you just concentrate a full weekend, you could probably get through a tutorial. Or if you're really um, smart and can like comprehend it instantly, you could probably do it within a few hours. So it just depends upon someone actually doing it. For the workshop um, that I led, it took about three or four hours to do two out of the three parts for the data viz. So, but that's like teaching and taking time and answering questions. So, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Lynn. So are these intended more for interactive, you know, person and per to person teaching or are they something that you can point someone to and they can do on their own? It's, it's meant for the latter, that's what I had in mind, but um, these are so awesome that I actually do want to like have people base like workshops off of. Um, I mean, these are all written out to do on your own and with that in mind, but there's no reason not to actually do it with others. I think I understand it that way that it's more for older, not so young people, schoolers. Pardon? Uh, so is this uh, ideas, I think they don't fit so correctly to some schooler students so about 13 years or so, starting with Python in schools. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that there must be more time to just let them play with stuff. Mm -hmm. And have you some ideas to this? Um, People just younger, it's the first language they start for sure. programming like this. Sure, yeah. So um, I, I don't know if you heard um, about what PyCon did this past year in the US. 
with um, the new coder um, tutorials that they did. Um, it was basically um, pie game and like um, making, I, I forget what kind of game they did. It was like a snake or something. Um, and um, it was meant for 12-year-olds um, to 18-year-olds, but we broke up like 12 to 15 and 15 to 18. And, um, I, well, an eight-year-old showed up and really enjoyed it. So um, Pi Game is actually really good for um, younger folks. And um, same with, like, Minecraft, I guess, supposedly you can um, um, use it with Python. Um, the resources for that will be on um, python.org when the new site launches. And um, it's supposed to kind of go with uh, Raspberry Pis. So um, th that sort of appeal of, like, your little tiny computer for, for your kids. Um, but, I mean, you don't need a Raspberry Pi to do that, so, um, yeah, there, all those uh, resources from um, um, Young Coder on GitHub, and I think um, PyCon US, this past year's site, links to it, so if you want to find it, I think that's where to go. Um, hi, nice presentation, by the way. Thank you. Um, Question, do you have any feedback from the persons which uh, completed the tutorial or just, I'm curious what they thought about it. Did they help them? What happened with the, those people? Did they continue programming? Well, um, I think, I, I've never, um, I mean, these are brand new, so they've only been live for a few months. I don't think anyone has gone through them and instantly got like, you know, software engineering job or continue on. Um, but I've gotten a lot of positive feedback, like this is exactly what folks have been looking for. Um, and of course, some things like your links are broken or this is not how you set up Windows <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but I'm, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. And, um, and they, they keep wondering like when more tutorials will show up. So I think, um, I think it's going well so far. Um, I'm hoping to get some success stories so maybe I can publish them, but it's still a very young website. What's your opinion on um, on tutorials like Codecademy and the the online like automatic uh, you know prompting type things? Sure. Um, well, I mean, those are very nice to learn like syntax and um, and like learning for loops and how to how to do small bits of code. Um, but I mean, they don't actually make like a final project like. Um, with the data viz tutorial, you can actually see things plot on Google Maps or launch like a, a graph from Matplotlib, so you can actually. Uh, within a couple hours, see something um, tangible. Um, I, it, it's good for like if you want to learn syntax and then go on to um, um, something else, like like these tutorials. But um, yeah, the, I think a lot of people have high hopes for them. Like I'm going to learn how to code and how to program with these free websites. But uh, yeah. yeah. Did you make the situation where? You, you want to teach to code to your coworker? I mean, is a suggestion that I already met when my coworker who are not technical, are like a management or marketing, want to learn to code a bit, mm -hmm. but they don't have eight hours to spend on it. So kind of like daily routine exercise that people can understand why it takes so long to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, I, I guess if you do work through these tutorials, you can understand how it like takes so long in debugging your own sort of code. Um, is your question more sort of like how do you help? I mean, a did you already make the suggestion, and or if so, can I use the same tutorial for people who don't have a, a full day to work on it, just like a micro task? Sure. I mean, of course. And uh, I mean, these these are broken up into parts, so like. Each tutorial has like like three to five parts, as I mentioned before, and so like if you just want want to do one part, that can just be done within like an hour or two, right? So um, I mean, they're bite size or as much time as you want to put in, and um, of course I am available via email or Twitter to like help answer questions and folks if if they don't want to bug their coworkers. <laughs> you have. I just think it's great to have something beyond. This is a for loop. This is a while because so many people who want to learn something about programming have no idea, okay, now what? How do I actually use it mm -hmm. in my life? Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to see these projects to give some idea to these people, because as programmers, we already have an idea of all the things we can do with it and mm -hmm. how it, you know, we can use it. People who don't program don't understand what do I do with it, 
So that's great to have the project based, I think. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Uh, hello, and what do you think about open source projects? Can they help for new coders? What open source projects you can advise for newcomers? Sure, yeah. Um, open source is awesome to get involved in. Um, as an example, um, PyLadies did um, um, like a, a Django sprint, and uh, right before, like a couple days before, we did an evening of how to contribute to open source for like new folks, give an introduction to um, contributing. Um, oftentimes, um, it's easier to give them like, um, in, like documentation or those easy pickings, like tickets that are um, labeled as easy. Um, um, but um, one one interesting thing that we did at our um, Django Sprint is um, we worked, we walked, or the the new folks walked through the tutorial and and said basically, I don't get what you mean by this, or this could be a lot clearer, or how did you get from you know this to this, and so they basically read through the tutorial and, and fleshed out any missing parts and make it more um, beginner friendly. So, um, so Django is, is actually um, a great introductory open source project to contribute to, um, mostly because they're very, very friendly to new folks, and um, um, there's a great um, on the website. Is, there's a great like intro on how to contribute to Django. Um, other open source projects. You guys have any suggestions? I mean, some someone say like, um, Twisted's quite hard to start, but yeah, there's um, there's a lot on open ha openhatch.org or yeah .org. Um, it has like a list of um, open source projects and um, how to contribute to them. Um, what else? Does anyone else have a project suggestion? I mean, it's great to see, like, to contribute to open source as a beginner because you can see the community behind it um, and see the enthusiasm, um, with, uh, especially with Django and um, the welcoming for new folks. So I would definitely suggest it. Any other questions? Coffee break time? Yeah, <laughs> sort of. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you again, Lynn. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you.